My friend Scott Mize died yesterday from the consequences of a stroke that um, he received while uh, walking uh, around um, San Francisco a week ago. And he uh, wasn't certainly old enough. Uh, he died sooner than the uh, uh, life expectancy that uh, one uh, would want to have uh, in uh, his uh, circumstances. But uh, obviously, uh, apart from the personal feelings of uh, sadness, it uh, made me think uh, of uh, what are uh, the ways uh, to die and how you should die. Uh, do you expect to die? I didn't, or maybe still don't, uh, rather irrationally. And um, there are uh, zero probabilities uh, or out of 80 billion, maybe 100 billion, that I want because uh, I'm an atheist, and uh, if you are religious, uh, for example, Christian, then the probability of you not dying increases uh, to one out of uh, uh, 80 or 100 billion, where um, the 80 and 100 billion uh, is the number of people who lived and died uh, over the course of uh, the history of the world. And uh, the desire to live is a natural consequence uh, of uh, our awe, our understanding of how incredible living is and how unique and how rare and, and precious. As we look out in the universe, uh, we don't see other things living except the things that we see in the biosphere of Earth. Also, literally, we are dying for the first time, having been the unbroken chain of living for four billion years. And uh, our cells constitute an organism that basically experiences dying for the first time when we do. We each also have the opportunity of continuing the chain, of course, through uh, our descendants. And uh, one of the most amazing things for me is to be a parent, a father, and to have, uh, in my case, uh, three children, who are now uh, grown adults and uh, are well-rounded, loyal, honest, and complex people, uh, each of them themselves. Now, the way to, to die really is uh, something that uh, most of us don't uh, think of. I am no expert, of course, just as I am no expert in the vast majority of uh, the topics that we are covering here uh, in the context. But that doesn't stop me of uh, thinking and formulating my opinions about uh, all of those topics as well as this one. And you um, are uh, kind enough to, to follow this um, with, together with me. So, obviously, you, you should think about dying and, and uh, what happens around you and plan ahead. For example, uh, making sure that uh, uh, you decide whether you want uh, to uh, preserve uh, a certain degree of uh, traditional biological naturalness in the process or, on the other hand, uh, opposite to that, you are happy for machines to keep you alive. Um, and machines are starting to be very good at keeping you alive. Now, depending on your definition of uh, what it means to be alive. 
Scott, for example, uh, was able to express uh, a few weeks ago as a complete coincidence because a relative died of COVID, his own point of view that he did not want machines uh, to prolong his life if he wasn't able uh, to live by uh, himself on his own uh, resources. And um, uh, the uh, respirator that uh, could have kept him uh, alive for possibly a very long time without any probability of uh, recovery because of how deep and, and complete uh, the damage uh, his brain suffered, consequence of the stroke was, his um, breathing uh, stopped. So other people um, may want to uh, decide differently. Um, because uh, they are more strongly attached to living under any circumstance or because they didn't have experience with uh, how undignified uh, being um, a vegetable on a hospital bed for uh, 10 years or, or more is or they are not considering that they will necessarily be a burden, even if we don't like to frame it this way, on those who are living, who will feel necessarily obligation to care for them with very little uh, opportunity of uh, improvement under certain, certain circumstances. Um, so it is... Um, meaningful to uh, ask these uh, questions and uh, the decision uh, should be as uh, formally and reliably recorded as possible because you don't want uh, to uh, burden healthcare practitioners, uh, emergency workers intervening uh, with the responsibility of making a decision the wrong way. Um, and by the way, in case your desires and instructions are not clear, they will always intervene. Uh, that is the Hippocratic oath they took uh, of preserving life, so they will intubate you and keep uh, you connected to machines as long as it takes. Uh, or uh, when your credit card expires, uh, depending uh, on uh, where you find yourself uh, being kept uh, in the meantime. Uh, another issue that you may think of is, as you grow older, what uh, should you do about uh, your ideas, your projects, your um, activities? Uh, uh, if you feel like slowing down, of course, just slow down and, uh, um, you know, do things that you can do and like to do and, and stop doing other things uh, that would take too much of your energy or that you wouldn't, you wouldn't feel comfortable doing. Other people may feel that even though they have the energy and the desire to do things, it is just quotation marks not appropriate for older people to start new and exciting projects because that is not how things are done. Only young people uh, do those things that are risky or uh, uncertain or uh, that need uh, time to be completed. But uh, the best way, in my opinion, to uh, go is with open projects uh, because you cannot uh, be sure that uh, you will be completing what you want to be completed right before dying or that when you complete them, you will be ready. So just accept the fact that what you are and what constitutes what you do is by its very own nature unfinished and unfinishable. 
yes, you can be a completist in your collections of um, Starbucks uh, uh, cups or um, stamp collections of uh, flowers uh, of the Alps, of whatever other collection, but you cannot be a completist in your life project. You cannot claim that now you are done. The openness of this is what uh, I think gives rise to an increasing desire of asking ourselves, can we keep going? Can we nurture life and our ability to nurture healthy life, both across as many individuals as possible, but also in the life of an individual as he or she uh, ages. Regardless of the chronological age, endowing the individual with the energy, the cognitive faculties, uh, the desire for exploration that uh, each of us uh, have when our chronological age is 20 or 30 or 40. And uh, at that point, obviously, we can reaffirm the same kind of freedom of choice that I mentioned before. Just as you should be free to record your decision, whether you want to be kept alive by machines or not, you must be free to decide not to take advantage of whatever rejuvenation treatments that may be available. Because you believe that uh, a human of 150 or 200 years shouldn't exist. And you should be free to decide that for yourself, as well as others, should be free to decide the opposite. And just as those would not force you to accept and apply the treatments you don't want, you shouldn't stop those others from developing, deploying, and applying to themselves the treatments that they do want. And all of this appears uh, pretty clear and clear-cut. And obviously, it would not be like that. First of all, the quality of life and the quality of death is unequal across the world. We should thrive to make sure that people do have the variety of choices that we enjoy and that as we improve our choices and the degrees of freedom that we have, everybody else is able to do that too. And we should thrive to make sure that we are maximizing the opportunities while minimizing the risks, understanding that eliminating the risks is impossible. And then, more farther out, as we talk about cryonics, which is basically the option of trying to reach a hospital that can heal you, repair the damage you have that is impacting you to the point where you are running the risk of dying, reaching that hospital in time rather than in space or when we are talking about mind uploading, where you accept that you are unable to repair the substrate that is supporting your consciousness, but that it is possible to opt for alternative substrates for the consciousness to inhabit and to keep exploring the world, 
we have to recognize that there are ultimate limits to this approach. Because when we go to sleep, we are told we don't die, and we learn to accept that, and we don't refuse to sleep unless we are psychotic, because we are afraid that the person waking up the next day is not the same person that went to sleep the day before. But we are also wondering if the person who went to kindergarten and was wondering about the future and what would happen to him or her as years and decades went by and the dreams and aspirations of that person are evidently very different from what happened afterwards, what reality designed and drew. And the reality not only as it happened along the way, but also as it has been informed by an increased knowledge about the world itself, so that the expectations and the assumptions and the aspirations of those decades past had no chance of corresponding to reality. So that person, the question is, really is the you of today? Or there has been in the intervening years, a moment where it would be reasonable to say that there has been a disconnect. And what we call you in kindergarten is not the you of today. And maybe the you of today is reasonable to look at as a separate individual from the you of 200 years old. And if that time span is too short for this kind of reasoning, if I say, let's talk about a million years or a billion years, it becomes much more reasonable to assume that even if there is an unbroken chain of consciousness linking you from moment to moment, pretending that as you adapt to the ever-changing environments, diverging from what you were to what you must be in order to exist, you become someone that is sufficiently different from your past selves to be able to look back and say, oh, that is David, he died. And to be absolutely fine about it. And if this kind of experience will happen uh, in the future on the level of our uh, individual lives and our individual expectations of, of what should uh, be the future, it will somewhat resemble to what is happening already today in terms of biological reproduction where it is not a question of uh, the transmigration of souls, metempsychosis, uh, which is this mytholo mythological ability to uh, exist uh, in lives uh, after dying uh, until enlightenment uh, um, absolves you from any attachment uh, to material reality, but we are even better because as we reproduce, we are able to influence the outcomes of the people that we bring into the world, the children that we must care for and educate and raise. And we may interact with our future selves. You can write yourself a letter to be opened in 10 or 20 years. You can write a letter to your past self too. 
imagining what would happen if that past self were able to read it. These kinds of experiences are useful. They put ourselves in the shoes of our past or future selves effectively and they enable us to learn, to introspect, to increase our self-awareness. And this is the self-awareness of existence, the self-awareness of the existence that um, ultimately may be limited. Is it the heat death of the universe? Is it the potential proton decay that will bring the universe uh, to end uh, in 10 to the 80 years or so, depending on the particular theory of physics uh, that we are formulating, even though we haven't had experimental proofs. If the universe is able to give birth today through black holes or tomorrow in some other cosmic event to new universes, well, maybe we are in the process of waking up unthinking matter. That is what we are, unthinking matter that woke up. And every time we reproduce, every time the biosphere expands, hopefully soon as we colonize other planets that were dead and we make them alive, we expand and extend the percentage of matter in the universe that is alive. So, far in the future, billions of years from now, maybe a large percentage of the universe will be living matter. And then as a new universe is born, we will be able to look at various strata of cycles of existence and non-existence, whether biological or uh, individual in our experience or uh, the universe itself. So, back to the beginning. Um, you uh, will experience as you probably have already experienced this uh, through your relatives and friends, uh, as I have today. And uh, it is uh, poignant and sad, but very, very natural to think about it. So thanks for coming with me along the journey.